Words from the Gospel. What do you want me to do for you? In the name of God, source, word, and life-giving spirit. Amen. Before we talk about the gospel, I just want to make a quick comment about Job. Job is one of the oldest parts of our scripture, a poem that is estimated to be from about 1000 BC. It is considered by some the sort of litmus test that Hebrew was itself its own language. Because of its age, it makes it a little tricky to know what's going on in Job. But it falls in what we call wisdom literature. And Job is, in essence, a large thought experiment about God and people. Now, you're gonna have to come back to church another time, and I'll tell you what the thought experiment is about, but you might remember that it has a bit of a funny ending and a bit of a, fu bit of a funny beginning and ending and it starts with this little wager between God and the devil. Although some in translators say the accuser. Anyways, God and the accuser, and they have this little bet about Job, and the rest of the poem is about what happens to Job. So come back and I'll tell you about the poem. Today we're gonna to talk about Bartimaeus. He's a blind beggar who is on the way, Jesus passes by on the way to Jerusalem. And I'm going to not really talk about blindness in the physical sense, but inward blindness, inward seeing. And I'm going to acknowledge right away that this sermon was written by another Reverend Michael a Reverend Michael from Texas, actually, and that's, he's an Episcopal priest there, and I read his sermon and thought, yeah, okay, he nailed it. I think uh, we're just going to use a little bit of what he says. Sometimes in life, we find ourselves in the dark. That light that guided us, that shone within us, a little dimmer. More, more subdued. We could be perhaps lost, can't figure out the way forward in life. Maybe we're confused about life. Maybe we just feel like all sense of clarity that we had is gone, and we're just stumbling through. Perhaps we're in darkness because of fear, fear that comes on after grief, or fear that comes from a loss or a great tragedy, some episode of sorrow. Sometimes darkness is a little bit more the shadows of our past, our sense of guilt and regret and failure, those disappointments that we've had in our life that we just can't seem to escape from underneath. So sometimes we are a lot like Bartimaeus in our gospel. We're sitting on the roadside of life and life is passing us by and we're in the dark, maybe in despair, maybe simply exhaustion, perhaps indifference. And so sometimes in life, we are like Bartimaeus, begging God, saying, the well is run dry, I have nothing in reserve. Help me, have mercy on me, as we hear in the gospel. From my own life, I have a few memories of this. I remember leaving the community of Teze back in 2011, and feeling very lost because I had spent almost two years in this community and now I was coming back to Toronto and had no idea what I was gonna do. 
Where am I going? What's going to happen with my life? You know, I was in my 20s, and although my parents told me, in your 20s, you can do no wrong, I was getting close to the end of my 20s, so I was kind of thinking, I got to sort this out. When I came back to Toronto, eventually, after a bit of a circuitous route, I ended up living with my grandfather. My wife and I moved in with him because he said, you got nowhere to live, so you should come stay with me. And we spent two and a half wonderful years living with him, and then he died. And I remember going back to his house on the night that he died. It felt so weird. There was that darkness of the grief and the loss. And we had so loved living with him and so felt sheltered in his home and by, his, by all his generosity. We can think about, in my life, I reflect on last May or the spring when lots of stuff was happening that was overwhelming me bunch of financial things, uh, we lost a bookkeeper, having trouble finding a new bookkeeper, went to a payroll system, it all went sideways, um, had a new office administrator who had joined us at the beginning of the year, just a lot of things, and I felt very overwhelmed, very lost uh, in the dark. So these are the moments we have in life when we're sitting, begging on the side of the road. But the interesting thing is these moments are important in our life. When we have these moments, when we have these experiences, they challenge us and they change us. And so they become moments that we could not foresee but moments in our lives that change how we see, how we see God, how we see the world, how we see ourselves, even how we see other people. I'm going to hesitate to say that it's necessary for the spiritual journey to have these moments, but let's imagine that there are opportunities, moments in which to be curious, moments in which to think how Am I being changed in this moment? And we need to be really careful. These are not sort of tests from God. That is what the story of Job is about. And inter interestingly, in the story of Job, at the end, he understands that it's not a test from God. And so he ends his uh, protest against God, and he takes off his mourning clothes and his sackcloth, and he washes the ashes from his face. Because he has realized that God doesn't cause or God doesn't intend for those moments of blindness, but rather that God doesn't waste them, that God doesn't waste anything in our lives, not our blindness, not our sitting by the roadside, not even our begging. Jesus says to Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? And he replies, let me see again. See again. It's the key part, see again. Bartimaeus could see. If we can think of his life, there was a time he could see, there was a time when he was blind. And then there's a time when his sight is restored, but it's a different way of seeing when his sight is restored. He doesn't just gain back what he had, he gains new sight through the lens of what had happened to him. In the case of Bartimaeus, what happened was he met Jesus, and so Bartimaeus sees again through the healing lens of Jesus in his life. 
he decides to follow Jesus. He looks at life in a new way. And that's a little bit the lesson for all of us in our gospel today. In the Bible, often people are in the wilderness, and then they end up in the promised land. It's a little bit like our life as well. We're in the wilderness at times, blindness. Or perhaps we could put it this way, in life, Sometimes we are also in death and finally through Christ in resurrection. That's our pattern. We are in life and in death and in Christ. We are in new life through the power of the resurrection. We can't see when these moments of darkness are going to come and happen to us but we can be like Bartimaeus and cry out in hope. Cry out as we sit there begging for something to happen, something to come into focus, some new glimpse of life, some new insight about ourselves and our situation, some new way to see life in the light of Christ. When I left Teze in 2011, I decided to become a teacher. I'm not a teacher, as you can tell. But I did meet Yvonne at Teachers College. That worked out pretty well for me. And so I'm very grateful that I was briefly a teacher. After my grandfather passed away, we stayed in his house for six months, but uh, as part of the estate, it had to be sold. And my wife and I were looking at being homeless. And then something amazing happened, and my parents used the estate inheritance to buy Vaughn and I a house. So in a sense, my grandfather still owns a house. He just doesn't live there physically with me. Over the past few months, I've had to think and reflect on all the things that really overwhelmed me and put me into darkness back in May. I had to look at all those problems with new eyes, new light, because they're all still here. And happily, I was able to see with new eyes like Bartimaeus ends up seeing. And so I'm back and happy to be here. See you outside on the hill for Harvest on the Hill. Amen.